Tottenham Hotspur has long been one of the most famous names in football. In the next hour, you can relive some of their most memorable moments from recent times. After achieving the near impossible task of winning the coveted League and Cup double in 1961, Tottenham returned to Wembley the following year to retain the FA Cup, went on to win the FA Cup again in 1967 and the Football League Cup in 1971 and 1973. So it's now 14 years since the last FA Cup triumph and the time is right for another victory. Having defeated Queen's Park Rangers, Hull City, Coventry and Exeter on the way to the semi-finals, Spurs with the Argentinian connection of Ozzy Ardiez and Ricardo Villa had already drawn 2 all with Wolves at Villa Park. Four days later, the replay at Highbury, commentator John Motson. Villar, wide on the left is Galvin. There he is. Oh, and a shot by Galvin, superbly saved by Bradshaw. There may even have been a slight deflection the minute that Galvin shot off that defender nearer to him. He took inside on his right foot to Galvin, and he hit it, and the ball must have touched the defender, and well held by Bradshaw. Palmer. This is Carr. Onside, and Galvin's going to do some defending here against Hibbit. This is Palmer. Bell coming in. Houston for Tottenham. Looks for Crooks. Headed by George Berry and here's Hibbert. Still being roundly booed by the Spurs fans. Ardile. Hoddle in the centre forward position here. The other two is left at the moment. The part from Perryman. Here comes Crooks. It's Crooks! It's there! Dark Crooks for Spurs! Hesitation of the defence. George Berry didn't seem to know whether to go for the ball or not, and Cook scores. His 20th goal of the season. And here's Glenn Hoddle, who made the goal, playing it through. Berry hesitated, missed it. Crooks headed, and the ball went in. There was an appeal for offside against Archibald, but he wasn't really interfering. And there goes Norman Bell, and Alexic has come, and he's outside his area when he handled that. That's the free kick to Wolves, and the goalkeeper could get booked here. The goalkeeper can well get caution for a handball. Steve Perryman unhappy with the way he dealt with it. I wasn't sure that he should have come in the first place, but he did come, and he's going to get booked. The bouncing ball, troubling the defenders. He might have headed it. He didn't. He punched it because there was a player there to beat, and that has earned Melia Alexic the first booking of this replay. And it's also earned Wolves a free kick right on the edge of Tottenham's area. Now Spurs scored from here on Saturday. Palmer deflection corner. Well, our dealers did well to shut down the man uh, Jeff Palmer it was to the right as we look now who hit the ball. Look where Ardiles was, closing him down, out off the Argentine for a corner. <laughs> McHedder across the jumps here, and Berry against the bar. Still loose. George Berry has hit the bar, and still the danger's not clear. Foul there, surely. Free kick to Spurs, but Wolves asking themselves how that came out. Cooks oh, is going through here. Oh, he's outpaced them. Cooks is there. Oh, yes. Number two for Crooks. Number two for Tottenham. And a magnificent ball by Glenn Hoddle. Right on half time. Brilliant goal. And the Spurs fans celebrate one of the memorable moments of the season. Hoddle drilled the ball through those two defenders. Crooks' his face was good enough, and his right foot finish was absolutely emphatic. Archibald.
Here's Velia. Velia shot. Oh! 3-0. And Ricky Velia produces another marvellous moment for Spurs. Absolutely vintage stuff. And that one came straight out of Argentina. Garth Cooks was again involved. Laid the ball on to Villar. Tempted the defender. Went inside a second man. Hit it with his left foot. And it screamed past Bradshaw. And Spurs go to Wembley. Ardiles as well. Indeed, Ozzy on his way to Wembley and Tottenham Hotspur now in their sixth FA Cup final and so far haven't lost in any of them. Will Manchester City be the team to stop this amazing run? As we go to Wembley, the two teams are just entering the arena and Keith Birkenshaw can just be seen in the picture leading the Spurs out. Can the silky skills of Hoddle and Ardiaz and the long forging runs of Ricky Villa be too much for Manchester City? Sit back and relive those magic moments of the 1981 FA Cup final and the replay. Bennett battling away well there for City. Very persistent. He's coming through again. He's got Reeves in support here. Here's Ransom. Oh, and a flying header and a brilliant goal. Gow. The calming influence of these experienced players is important at this stage of the afternoon. This is Ardiles taking them on. Gow tries to get his tackle in, and he does right on the edge. And could we see a Glen Hoddle special? Spurs love these free kicks. Archibald has just pushed power away very roughly and is being spoken to by the referee for that. But Glen Hoddle is the player you'd back to create something from 20 yards out from a free kick. Ten minutes to go. Is he going to float it in for the strike force on the far post or will he try and chip Corrigan from here and that was Hoddle oh yeah. Hutchison it's in Tommy Hutchison has scored at both ends if you call it an own goal Hoddle will get the congratulations from Tottenham but it went in on Tommy Hutchison Donald. So still Spurs with Ardiles. Brilliant. And his Archie ball has got a chance. Good save. Ricky Villa. Ricky Villa scored. And it was made by his fellow Argentine, Ozzy Ardiles. After eight minutes, the man who was taken off on Saturday. Driven in by Ardiles. Archibald was blocked by Corrigan. Good goalkeeping, but he couldn't stop the rebound. Villar, the scorer. Made, look at this, by Ozzy Ardiles. The skill is there for all to see. Brilliantly set up. Corrigan did awfully well here against Archibald. That wasn't his fault. And Ricky Villar puts the rebound in between the two defenders. And Spurs are ahead. Ransom with the kick. Miller, Reeves underneath it. And now Hutchison to McKenzie. Oh, tremendous goal! Steve McKenzie. Fabulous shot. Well, what a start. 1-1 and a free kick to Spurs. That's Hoddle, hit the post. Oh, what's going to happen next? How close can you be? Glenn Hoddle bending it round, and Corrigan might even have got a hand to that. Kenzie, careless, Corrigan to Hoddle. Three ahead of him. Cooks is the man making the run. Read the header to Villa. Villa shot! Well, Joe Corrigan got in the way, that's all you can say. It seemed to knock him backwards from Ricky Villa. What an extraordinary save. 
Glenn Hoddle tried to chip Crooks in. This is Velia. And Corrigan, his left fist flying. <laughs> On by Reeves to Bennett. Paul Miller trying to check Bennett. Down goes Bennett. Penalty! Penalty! Keith Hackett had no doubts. David Bennett has won a penalty for City. And Bennett there got Spurs into a tangle. Bennett is, is the player. Hooten is going to help Miller. Down goes Bennett in the tangle. And a penalty it is. And a penalty has never been missed in an FA Cup final at Wembley. The last one was 1962 for Spurs. And here comes Reeves. And it's there. Kevin Reeves keeps up the record. And Paul Miller unhappy with the decision. Hoddle. Oh, the chance here for Archibald. Crooks! Two-two. <laughs> and the double act works again. Spurs stayed onside. Archibald went in first. Guard Crooks scored. That's his 22nd of the season. It comes after 71 minutes, and the penalty appeals don't matter now. Hoddle again, amazing. Keith Birkinshaw sees his side come back again as they did in the first match. Bennett's making his run now. He's come to McKenzie. What a good tackle by Graham Roberts. And now Galvin. Spurs have got two to his right, and Galvin wants to go on his own. Villiers. And still Ricky Villiers. What a fantastic run. He scored. Amazing goal by Ricky Villiers. All of a sudden, Spurs are in front again. And look what happened here. The big man from Argentina went round one, two, three. Joe Corrigan came to block, and Villa squeezed it in. Spurs celebrated in great style, as we see it again from behind the goal. Just look how many players he twisted and turned past, and then got his shot in. So, Ricky Villa has scored twice in this replay, having been taken off on Saturday. Archibald... And that's it! Spurs have won the cup! Ozzy Ardile has fulfilled his great ambition. He has won an FA Cup winner's medal. It's the year of the cockle. Spurs made it six wins out of six and are now looking to retain the cup once again. Arsenal, Leeds United and Aston Villa have already fallen in the previous round, so now it's the quarter-final at Stamford Bridge against a rampant Chelsea. And here's Hazard again in space. It's Crooks. Hazard coming through again. This is Perryman. Oh, and Archibald goes in, and Hazard goes in. And the ball wouldn't go in for Spurs. Hillary, who's been known to strike them from here. Three Chelsea players mingling with the Tottenham wall in front of Clements. Perryman is debating with the referee. Fillory wants to line the shot up. He's got Rhodes Brown to his left. He drives it. Oh, what a goal! Fillory produces the goal. That matters for Chelsea. Now, will this be a case of the bite of it? Fillory now has got to help line the wall up because Spurs have the free kick in what is normally the territory of Hoddle or Ardiles. Ardiles to Hazard, to Hoddle, good save by, oh, and Archibald! Archibald's got his first goal since he came back. It was a gift, really, but he was on hand. And unlucky Steve Francis, the 17-year-old keeper, 
the ball was played to Hoddle, the shot along the ground, Francis got his hands to it, couldn't hold it, and Archibald makes it 1-1 for Spurs. Both goals coming from free kicks. Underlining again the vast importance of set-piece play. It's been a good-tempered match this, bearing in mind what's at stake. Well controlled by the referee and beautifully balanced at 1-1. Between these great London rivals, Spurs of the first division and Chelsea of the second. Hilton for Tottenham. Archibald, little flick for Hazard. Hoddle moving up on the right. Hoddle shot. Oh! What a goal. A beautiful move by Tottenham. And Glenn Hoddle fires in their second to turn this cut tie on its head. They came out for the second half, a goal behind, and now they're a goal in front. And it was an educated move which says so much about the Spurs. Little flick there. On by Archibald to Hazard, out to Hoddle, and in that space, he's lethal. Right across the keeper, Spurs are ahead. After 55 minutes. Away by Nutton, it's going to come to Galvin. Oof. And the player who it struck was a Tottenham colleague who splat out in the penalty area. Paul Price. Galvin. Look at the length on that. Hoddle. He shook off Villery there. And he made room for Hazard. And they just can't stop Glenn Hoddle. Hazard the scorer. His second important goal in a matter of days. But Villery lost out to Hoddle and that's where it cost Chelsea dear. Because Hoddle set the chance up and Hazard buried the shot. Villery for Chelsea. And here's Walker, and there's Pates, and a chance there for Price there! Alan Mays gets one back. A fine cut tie. And Glenn Hoddle has a hand in the three goals which Spurs scored in 14 minutes. In the semi-final, Leicester City were the victims, losing 2-0 at Villa Park. So it's back to Wembley once again. Spurs opponents this time, Queen's Park Rangers. And as Tottenham old boy Terry Venables leads out Rangers, Keith Birkenshaw has the enviable task of leading out his team for the second year running. The first 105 minutes of the match were goalless. So now we join match commentator John Motson in the second half of Extra Time. That goes right. That was Gregory this time with a much firmer header. And Simon Stainrod with a chance maybe to move away for Rangers. Oh, good tackle by Hoddle on Waddock. Roberts. Hoddle. Hoddle! It's there! It's there! He won it with the tackle and he scored the goal! Glenn Hoddle, the pride of Tottenham, has set the fans delirious again. Hoddle won it with the initial tackle on Gary Waddock. Waddock was on the floor when this happened, injured. Hoddle shot, it went through Tony Curry's legs, may have even slightly brushed the inside of his leg. Pucker unsighted, 1-0 to Spurs. And Glenn Hoddle has produced it again when it matters for Tottenham. It did just get a deflection off Tony Curry, but it's Hoddle's goal. <laughs> Gary Brook, who came on as substitute, has lost the ball and forced Price to make a very hurried clearance. Well, it's almost like winter now, the way the rain's coming down. The afternoon has turned in more ways than one. Staying Rod with the long throw for Queen's Park Rangers. Robert with Hazel split, and Fennick was in there, and it's a goal! Terry Fennick! Referee, 
Gregory, same rod. Away from John Gregory, Graham Roberts, Archibald to his right, he overran it, but still got through. This is Graham Roberts, was he brought down? Penalty! Tony Curry came in behind him. Cranick was in close attendance, but a penalty has been given, and it was a splendid run by Graham Roberts. Curry Venable's side couldn't stop him. Bob Hazel made an error in that early on, but Roberts went on. And what happens here? Tony Curry comes in with the tackle. Down he goes. Penalty. Huddle to take. Scores. Never has a penalty been missed in an FA Cup final at Wembley. And Tony Curry gave that one away. The Rangers captain. And it was the Tottenham playmaker, Glenn Hoddle, who wasted no time in converting it. Well, the stadium humming now as the Spurs fans look again anxiously at their watches they know as Glenn Hoddle knows that we're in time being added on by the referee for stoppages and there it is Tottenham Hotspur have won the FA Cup two years running but Hoddle's congratulations of Waddock say it all Ray Clements is relieved because Queen's Park Rangers put up a wonderful fight in the second half here Having retained the cup in 1982, but losing out to Liverpool in the League Cup final of the same year, Spurs now had to try and win a league title. Keith Birkenshaw resigned at the end of the 83-84 season, and now, with the new manager, Peter Shreve, in the driving seat, it was all systems go. Miller looking, Robert Scott, and on by Cook. The breakthrough has come, and it's well deserved. stoppage now, not as many as there were in the first half, and here's Tadozi coming in from the position where he was when the whole game was changed, and there's Falco, he gets his second, Aaron Luck with the free kick, which was the target, Falco! Roberts who climbed at the far post and Falco who finished it off. Rostron away. Very lively opening first five minutes of the second half. Perriman. It's Galvin going in. And Crooks. Must be. It is. 2 0. And Garth Crooks has scored Tottenham's second goal. A beam from Crooks. Turned on by Falco, it's Crooks. Good save by Hucker. Crooks again. It's there, is it? Yes. 1 0 to Tottenham, and Crooks has scored for the second consecutive game. The odds have drifted away from them here. But this is Roberts. The decent cross, and Falco is there, and it's 2 2. Falco just like Bannister is having a season in front of goal where he can do nothing wrong Falco and now Falco but he was just there in time but it comes for Hoddle now for oh a great save and Crooks Spurs go into the lead and Garth Crooks is the scorer Corner for Spurs, which they take quickly. To Bowen, and perhaps Roberts can strike one here, and Ardiles can, and Ardiles! Has put Tottenham in front, with less than two minutes of the first half remaining. 
1986-87, Spurs with a reputation for quality football to uphold. Everything was looking good for the start of the footballing action. Last season's new signing Clive Allen had firmly established himself as one of the leading strikers in the country. And David Pleat was now in charge, having joined from Luton. Let's join the play at White Hart Lane in November and enjoy a selection of great goals from the 1986-87 season. comes shooting down still. Allen to Hoddle. Now Ozzy Ardiles is in the middle and marks and Mitchell Thomas comes in and Spurs have scored. Plenty of noise at the moment from the Villa supporters. Away to our left. But Villa have got some defending to do now. This is Hodge. He's got class enough in support and Clive Allen. And it's there. Steve Hodge. Against his old club, and what pleasure that will give him. Hoddle with the corner. And the header is in! From Hodge! 20 minutes to go. Hoddle. Allen had started his sprint down the middle. Classen. Onside! Ardiles to Waddle. Dummy there. And a shot. Oh, a mistake by Gromola. And Waddle has put Spurs into the lead. Ardiles. Here's Hodge. Looking to turn. And out of They may be Tottenham, but there's a purpose about them as well. And there's Hoddle's ball towards Clive Allen. Oh, that was hit straight at Hodge. And a good cross by him, and Waddle coming in at the far side. 1 0. Finding Dean Saunders. Stopped by Mallet. Ideal is to Hoddle, and it'll flick by him. Paul Allen on his way to his cousin Clive now. Turning on one way, turning the other. Gets it across for Paul Allen. That's two. Bringing Dave Langan into the game. There's his cross coming in, but Goff again there. Maybe Spurs now. It's four against three now for Tottenham. And Hoddle's going through on his own. Oh, it's in a superb goal by Hollow. He salutes the crowd, he gets applause from his manager on the bench and from the Tottenham fans as well. A moment of true mastery. Hollow with the kick. Goff is in there, Houching was marking him. Clive Allen's play on to the referee, Allen seemed to use his back. He's come out again for Chris Waddle. It's his for Allen! Clive Allen! Would you believe it? But Spurs still went down to their first ever defeat in an FA Cup final. And by the time Terry Venables joined the club in December 1988, the fans were becoming impatient for success. With this in mind, Venables brought from Barcelona one of the world's leading strikers. For the start of the 1989-90 season, Gary Lineker was to be wearing the number 10 shirt. Kick, 
taking over, but Fennec got it to Gascoigne and Tottenham a level. Gascoigne again. Walsh. Well, that's what Tottenham needs. Someone to try the difficult thing and hope it might come off, and it has for Gascoigne. But really, Walsh takes a great deal of the credit. Whipped in by Vanden Howe. Lineker is off the mark. That's his first goal for Spurs. He's found Stewart. That's a nice turn. Lineker left and Gascoigne arriving to Stewart's right. Here is Gascoigne. And Lineker. 1-0. Lineker's first goal in front of the White Hart Lane faithful. Mabbott. A nicely taken. Rangers with problems here. They've let Lineker turn. 2 0. Sedgley. Oh, Naeem's in. And Lineker's unmarked. A hat trick, perhaps? Yes. Gary Lineker. Here's Thomas, the substitute. Oh, good goal. Mitchell Thomas gets Spurs back on terms. Still Gascoigne. Still for Gascoigne. Oh, this is a good run. And Lineker has scored another. A hat trick in his last league game. And another one here. But it owed a lot in its creation to a marvellous run from Paul Gascoigne. Typical Lineker. Thomas. Lineker. Thomas again. Oh, this is nice stuff from Tottenham. And Gascoigne. Setting his sights here, oh, it's a marvellous goal. Sideways. It's in there. Stopped in his tracks, Mitchell Thomas for Spurs. Southampton trying to hold the line up, but Gascoigne is onside and skips home the opener. A lovely goal from Paul Gascoigne. And now Gascoigne, feeling murdering, trying to get back at him. Here's Gary Lineker running at Inks. Oh, it's a marvellous strike. World class finishing from Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker again busying himself along the edge of Millwall's box. There he is. Here's Stewart. And Samways had a look. Might play one. Oh, that is brilliant. A delightful goal from Vinny Samways. Walsh for Spurs. Good ball for Lineker. It's got to be three. Up surely in the second minute of the second half. Naeem's corner taken short. Here he is again. And Lineker! <laughs> given far too much room. <laughs> well, it feels the handball there, but play waved on. And here comes Polston, Lineker, Naeem, Polston's gone on through the middle, if they can find him they have, there's a chance here, and he scored, what a run by John Polston. Naeem, Lineker's the target and Charlton have stopped a feeling for offside, he's on though, oh I say, Gary Lineker. What about that for a finish? Paul Allen, marauding again down that right side. Lineker, the target. Howell's got in. Here's Gascoigne. Stewart. Paul 
Rod Stewart for Tottenham. 1 0. Gary Lineker nicely done. Oh, very nicely done from Gary Lineker. Gascoigne waiting for movement from Lineker way on this near side. And that's Paul Allen. And the goalkeeper couldn't keep it out. Stewart, what can he do here? Oh, well, that's what he can do. A fabulous goal. That's a fine ball by Sedgley to Stewart. Given Manchester United something to think about here. Stewart's cross. Lineker pulling away. Gascoigne coming into the middle. That's a classic goal. Spurs finished third with the strike power of Gary Lineker and Paul Gascoigne. So as we go into the 1991 Cup run, we can see just how effective that partnership became in its second season. The year ends in a one, and historically the Spurs should have fun. Can they follow the success of the previous years, 1901, 1921, 1961 and 1981? The next 20 minutes or so will tell us that. It's Fennick and Gascoigne, and uh, Philip Wright is absolutely adamant about where he wants the ball placed but it still looks as though Fenwick stole a couple of feet and Gascoigne will take it Stewart's forward oh Stewart it's in Paul Stewart scores against his old club and what an unfortunate incident in Blackpool's defence they've only got just over 3,000 supporters here at Tottenham which is why that goal is greeted with almost silence. Knocked in by Gascoigne. The defenders missed it. Lineker got a touch. Stewart hit it first time, left-footed. Magil Hagi couldn't keep it out. Stewart's eighth goal of the season. And it was Ian Gore who missed the first header. And right in at the corner. After the long trip to Blackpool and that narrow victory, it's back to White Hart Lane and Spurs opponents this time, Oxford United. With both Paul Gascoigne and particularly Gary Lineker having goal-scoring success in the league, it would now be up to them to help Tottenham over the next hurdle on the road to Wembley. Put a good little run together, unbeaten in six games before last week. Boyle, Magilton, good ball, Nogan. Trouble for Tottenham, great save by Torsbeck. And a good shot by number 10, Lee Nogan. Pitch it really well and the Norwegian goalkeeper had to get down quickly to his right. And Oxford make a promising start. Forward by Howes, it was Andrew Melville who miskicked. Lineker's in behind him here. Corner to Spurs. Well, Walsh has placed the ball for the corner. Howells has come onto the six-yard line. Mabbott called so up. Can play back to Gascoigne. Nice touch back to him too by Lineker. Foster's there, Navitz there. Gary Navitz. 1 0 Tottenham. Well, they look excited, but I think it's relief because that's the sort of start that Spurs really needed. Gary Navitz, the captain, gets the opening goal, and Terry Venables realises that that might just settle Tottenham down. Well, Gary Mabbott always goes up for corners, and that fell really nicely for him off Foster, and he tucked it in the corner. <laughs> Gascoigne's header, he's put Lineker in. Now, can the England captain finish? Yes, he can. Emphatically so, in real Lineker style, and the England connection works for Spurs, it's Gascoigne and Lineker, and it's 2-0 in the 20th minute, and Spurs give themselves real breathing space in this cup tie, and Lineker, for whom they haven't been going in quite as regularly recently, will be really pleased with that. It's Gascoigne who wins the header, Lineker is played onside, I think, by Foster, Vasey starts to narrow the angle, and he drives that with power into the roof of the net and good work by Gascoigne that got height on the jump 
guided the ball through to Lineker. That's possibly the goalkeeper's view, and he had no real chance. Phillips. And Gascoigne now trying to get the ball from him. But good play by Phillips. Worked that beautifully. And he's found Martin Foyle. And there's a chance here for Oxford. And Foyle gets the ball in the net and gets it back to 2 1. And that was all about the work done by Les Phillips in midfield, giving Oxford the opening to get back into the game through Foyle. Let's go and find Stewart. And there are four other top and players forward here. This is Paul Allen. To his right is Naive. Waiting for Terry Fennick to go down the right. Back with Naim again. Gascoigne. Taking them all on, Gascoigne. Oh, and Ken Vasey put an arm out and did well. But it was a scintillating run. And he threatened to chip so through the lot. Fennick. Allen. Gascoigne takes over, the crowd were pleased about that. It was going nowhere, that attack, but it is now. Walsh, Gascoigne, it really is going somewhere now. It's a brilliant goal, and that's what he can do. And the crowd loved it. Gascoigne has turned an attack that was going into a cul-de-sac into one that may drive Tottenham down a main road into the fifth round of the cup. It was an absolutely outstanding piece of individual play. And Venables can smile, and he needs to say nothing. 58 minutes gone, and the ground lifted by Paul Gascoigne. It was as if they were inviting him to do something unexpected, and just look at what he did. He played the first ball into Walsh. He got the return, he went through the two centre-backs, so wide you thought he couldn't score, and then slid it in from an angle. Simpson. Good running from the midfield here by Les Phillips. It's a great run. And he's found Foyle. An excellent goal by Oxford. And the same two players who made the first one possible have reproduced the act. Gascoigne. Steen gets the challenge in there. This is going to go right to the end, or is it? Fennick. Allen. Still Allen. Good run, he's found Gascoigne. Oh, terrific! That's the finish they wanted in more ways than one, the Spurs fans. Gascoigne has made it 4-2 and scored his second. In fact, he's had a hand in all four. Paul Allen gets some credit there too for opening up the way. And Tottenham now in the 87th minute really should feel their home and dry. It was a bit nervous for a few minutes there at 3-2, but look what happens here. Allen carries the ball into the penalty area and then slides it to Gascoigne. The defenders are wrong-footed. The finish is explosive. The Paul Gascoigne show revving up into top gear and a trip to Fratton Park to play fifth-round opponents Portsmouth. Not a task most clubs would relish, but with Gazza in brilliant form, who and what could stand in his way? Section. Cool. Aspinall. Four others up with him here for Pompey. It's one on for Chamberlain. The Tottenham end stunned, but the rest of the ground celebrates with Mark Chamberlain. Portsmouth take the lead. Four minutes before half time. Now Thomas. Gascoigne runs on. Two to the right for Thomas as well. Allen is one of them. Here's Samways. Now it's Allen. Gascoigne. Yes! Spurs have equalised. And you don't need Telly who scored that. Referee says to Gascoigne, don't prolong the celebrations with the fans, but just look how delighted they are. And just when the superstar was required to prove his status at a desperate time for Tottenham he does just that coming in on Adams cross that's a great header and the tension showing on the face of Frank Burrows whose side have stretched Tottenham led for a while now it's 1-1 one, one.
forward by Van den Howe. Gascoigne. It's still Gascoigne. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's 2-1. And the drama of the FA Cup. Shown up in the reaction of the Tottenham supporters to another memorable piece of skill from the player that everybody keeps talking about and it won't stop now. 2-1 to Tottenham. So it wasn't to be Portsmouth, but could it be Notts County? It's a damp Sunday afternoon at White Hart Lane. The faithful have travelled down from Nottingham and what was lying in store for them over the next 90 minutes was anyone's guess. Anyone except a certain Mr. Gascoigne, that is. Even Terry Venables couldn't predict the outcome of this quarter-final clash. Gates and Shaw to both forward for the corner. Gascoigne's lost it on the edge of the area. Oh, Reardon. What a shot! What a fantastic goal! Don O'Reardon has hit that out of nothing. And to say the danger wasn't over is an understatement. Just look at the way it flew in. Short to Naeem. Oh, it's got in. Off short, I think, number four. Naeem will probably claim it. Spurs have equalised. It was Naeem's shot, but I think it went in off number four. Poor Craig Short. Naeem makes room to drive it. And that, yes, it's in off the post as well. An agonising goal for Notts County, but a priceless one for Spurs. Habits. Walsh, Sedgley, Gascoigne, goal! A smiling manager. Delighted supporters. And a goal scorer who seems to know when the moment is right in the FA Cup. Sedgley got forward following the corner. It ran on to Gascoigne and he planted that with such precision that even Sherry could do nothing about it. Gascoigne, two against Oxford, two against Portsmouth, and now is it the winner against Notts County? Having turned on the style in all of the previous rounds, Tottenham Hotspur were now only one game away from their ninth appearance in an FA Cup final. And with Paul Gascoigne having recovered in double quick time from a hernia operation, he was now in the starting lineup against arch rivals Arsenal. This was to be the first ever FA Cup semi-final to be played at Wembley Stadium. In front of a sellout crowd of almost 80,000, the two teams took to the field with great anticipation. What might unfold in the coming 90 minutes? Tremendous reception for the two teams. For a contest of pride and not a little prejudice. A private argument of North London with overtones of doubles and finance to be played out before a world audience. The match is being watched on television in over 30 countries. The early attacking idea is coming from Tottenham. First time Gascoigne's been able to dwell on the ball, faced then by Paul Davis. Tottenham seem to be finding quite a lot of space but that wasn't the best of passes but the challenge was a little late on Stewart which may have been the reason and the free kick is just left of centre Gascoigne who's free kick Stewart met against Blackpool started the Tottenham scoring and he scored in every round after that made the first and involved in everything since. Mabbott has gone forward with Stewart to the right, Lineker and Howes to the left. Is Gascoigne going to have a crack? He is, you know. Oh, I say! Brilliant! That is schoolboy's own stuff. Oh, I bet even he can't believe it. Is there anything left from this man to surprise us? That was one of the finest free kicks 
that this stadium has ever seen. Seaman got his hands, couldn't hold. Spurs have the lead. Paul Gascoigne, the scorer. Pals, certainly pushing well up on Lee Dixon, which will limit his attacking abilities. And again, the challenge was a little bit venomous and a little bit poorly timed. Stewart. Enjoyed playing in midfield, Stewart. Nice little touch from Gascoigne. Alan was onside, plenty forward. Mavet trying to get there. Smith, it's gone in. Lineker got the final touch. Alan Smith was back in his own six-yard area, but that was the flick that did it. There, put Alan away. Howes was forward, Mavet was forward, Smith was back, Lineker with a little stub toe, Tottenham up to up. Goal number 18, but it was that pass that made it. Looking down from behind David Seaman's goal, Smith, it came off his chest, he was trying to get there, and you don't need to give Lineker even half an opportunity. Mabbott, Lineker, a couple of times, Mabbott. Oh, a man who scored for both sides. Last time Tottenham were in the final in 87. But the second one proved to be the winning goal for Coventry. Smith. for offside it's not it's curled Smith he scored Dixon's cross Smith's head Naeem. Slight hesitancy. Good tackle by Edinburgh. Mabbots. Fed it well. Naeem to the left. Samway's ahead. And Lineker uses him by not using him. Good try, score! And David Seaman will be very disappointed about that. It seemed to go through his fingers. Good break by Tottenham. Very, very good running by Samways that helped the opening. But I don't think David Seaman will be too happy. Look at the run he makes. And that gives a bit of space to Lineker to his right. But the shot seemed to go through the fingers. Right, a poor the soft goal. But as you say, Vinny Samways, look at his run there. Takes ball. Tony Adams dives in. Gary Lineker gets a yard away from him. Stretches for the shot. And Seaman appeared to get both hands to it, went through his fingers, and I think that expression sums up what he thinks about it. Merson coming up round the back. Turning header by Edinburgh. One of the unsung players in the Tottenham side who's played so well. An example to any professional player, Gary Mabbott, and he's going to bring his team back here for the final. And Gaza with the kisses and being kissed tonight. Look at Terry Venables. Goodness me. They were kids together. After that emphatic victory over the Gunners, it was back to Wembley again for the FA Cup final. Their opponents, Brian Clough's Nottingham Forest. Cluffy has never won the FA Cup as player or manager. So Tottenham's task would be even harder to achieve against a side eager to break their manager's run of bad luck in this competition. We join match commentator John Motson, just as Stuart Pearce is about to take a free kick for Nottingham Forest. Oh, it's in! What a 
splendid shot by the Forest captain to give Brian Clough's team the lead in the cup final. And what Gascoigne did in the semi-final against Arsenal, Pierce produces against Tottenham in the final. Half away by Sedgley. Pierce is coming in with a header. Offside against Nigel Clough. No need to stop the game. Let's put a quick shot of Paul Walsh there. But here's Paul Allen and Paul Stewart with a chance for Spurs. And the equaliser! Paul Stewart scores and Spurs are back in the cup final. Naeem got the ball across to Paul Allen, who really made inroads there. Lineker was one side of him, but Stewart was the other. And Stewart, coming in from the angle, drives that with great accuracy and venom past the right hand of Crossley and into the far corner. And Paul Stewart, who scored Spurs' first FA Cup goal at Blackpool in the third round. Brandon Howe. Here comes Walsh. That's looping a bit. Hit the bar. Extraordinary. From Paul Walsh, who can't believe his luck. The goalkeeper's injured. But this was a real looper from the left side by Paul Walsh. Over Crossley, against the crossbar. And the keeper hurt as he fell behind the line. Well, how close can you be? In goes Stewart. Oh, a chance at the far side, and it's in! An own goal, I think. I think it was Des Walker, actually, got the last touch. It went in off a Forest player, and Spurs are in the lead for the first time in this cup final from the corner. Des Walker has the misfortune to put the ball in his own net to give Tottenham the lead. Here's Walsh. And there it is. Tottenham Hotspur have won the FA Cup for a record eighth time. And Brian Clough has failed at his 34th attempt. 1991, the year ended in a one and Spurs did have fun. It wasn't all about a one-man show. It was all about team spirit and commitment, something which Tottenham showed throughout the whole competition. This little prize is what it's all about.